with Beanie's Trees here, and today I'm going to show you how to ferment ramps. Uh, so first I'm going to go into a bigger, kind of more general explanation of fermentation, the process, how it works, a little bit. I'll try not to go on too many tangents. Um, and then I'll go into a little more detail. I've got three ramp recipes, three ramp fermentation recipes to show you. Um, so let's get started. Fermentation is the process uh, where lactobacillus bacteria, which is a bacteria that's naturally found on the surface of fruits and vegetables and is found in our bodies, in our guts, in our digestive system. Um, it's a process where that bacteria uh, is put into, into an uh, alkaline environment, alkaline environment that kills other yeasts and bacteria that are also naturally found on fruits and vegetables and allows that lactobacillus bacteria to kind of take over and culture um, in the liquid surrounding the fruit or vegetable. When that happens through that, over the kind of two week process of fermentation, generally a week to two weeks, um, during that process of fermentation, the lactobacillus bacteria are consuming the sugars in the fruit or vegetable, uh, and then they are releasing gases and liquid waste. The gaseous waste kind of just you know goes up and out of your jar. The liquid waste turns into an acidic solution that preserves your fruit or vegetable. Now it is proven that fermentation preserves some of the more delicate nutrients, so vitamin C and some of those more some of those more delicate nutrients that you're gonna find in your fruits and vegetables. Fermentation, the process of fermentation, preserves those um, nutrients, while the process of heat packing your vegetables, canning, and those sorts of things destroy those nutrients. So in that way, your fermented vegetables are going to be healthier for you than your canned vegetables. If you're interested, if, you, if you're kind of a nerd and you feel you know your heart starts to flutter a little bit, um, you can read Sandor Katz's book, uh, the Art of Fermentation. So, uh, moving on. With ramps specifically, uh, the three recipes, and I developed three different recipes, uh, because when you look at a ramp, um, you have two very different structures to the ramp. Um, if you're thinking from like kind of culinary terms, you've got your bulb and your stem, and those are firm, um, and they're going to have stored sugars and things in them. And then you have the leaves, and the leaves are just made up of a different kind of thing. They're, they're thinner, they're more like a leafy green, and then you have the, the stuff down here again that's more like an onion um, or a leek. And so I like to separate those two things when I ferment them, just because again, they're gonna kind of give you two very different products. The bulb and stem section is going to keep a lot of its shape and it's going to really be kind of the same thing still when you're done with it. It's gonna look the same, it's gonna behave the same way as far as just its shape and its structure and its texture. Whereas the leaves are going to change a lot during the process of fermentation. So I like to separate those two things and that's why I've decided to do one um, whole bulb recipe. Now the recipe that I'm, that I'm doing, um, we're just going to pop that in there. We're gonna make, we're gonna cut it off at, at the right length and we're gonna have just each stem be you know, one piece in the jar. Whereas the leaves, um, we're going to do two different methods of fermenting the leaves. Uh, so once we remove them from the stems, we will do whole leaves where we roll them up and tuck them into our jars. And then we'll do another method where we actually chop very finely. Um, we'll chop the leaves very finely and we'll pack those into jars. Uh, and so there's kind of two, because the leaves are in one way, they'll hold their shape and they'll stay together during the fermentation process if you don't chop them apart. Um, however, you can chop them apart very finely and make almost like a paste, like a red pepper paste or, you know, some other sort of sandwich spread. Those are the three ways that we are going to ferment our ramps. All three ways are delicious. All three ways will help those ramps uh, last you all summer long, all next winter, until ramps are ready to be, you know, harvested again. So this is, personally, I feel like one of the very best ways to preserve the flavor of ramps, literally, for the entire year. So, um, to ferment anything, you're going to need some basic tools, equipment. Uh, you'll need some sort of container to ferment your fruit or vegetable in. I like to use glass whenever possible. You'll need a weight to weigh down your fruit or vegetable and you'll need uh, some sort of lid that's going to keep outside air from coming into the jar but that will allow the gases that the, fermented, the fermentation process is creating to escape. You will need salt, you'll need water, you'll need whatever fruit or vegetable you have. Um, and so that, in a nutshell, is uh, 
the, the big list of um, big list of things that you need for fermentation. Again, this process is so um, it's one of the earliest forms uh, that people learn to preserve their food. So it's really, really simple. I mean, it, people happened upon it by accident. <laughs> In fact, um, I have a funny story. My son used to like to take uh, sliced cucumbers to school with him and they didn't, he only liked them with salt on them. Um, and they don't have like a salt shaker at school in the lunchroom. And so he took the cucumbers and he packed them into his little um, Tupperware container and he salted them. And then he put them in his backpack and forgot they were there. Uh, and I found them about, I don't know, two, three weeks later and they had turned themselves into pickles. Um, so it's definitely, it's something that people have been doing by accident for thousands of years. So let's get started. Alright, so for our first ramp recipe, we're going to ferment the bulbs. Um, the reason I'm doing this first is just, you'll see as we do the process, uh, so I've got our whole ramps, we're going to uh, we'll put them into the jar to see how, um, where we should cut them. And basically I'm just kind of going by that line there, or just a little bit lower is where I want to trim it so that it fits into the jar, but it's as long as possible. It's going to be kind of a nice, long, elegant uh, ferment here with a lot of ramp bulbs all as tall as they can be proud um, in the jar. So then I'm going to use this ramp uh, to cut the other ramps, making sure that I'm always um, using the same ramp as the guide because otherwise you have a, uh, you run the risk of your ramps either getting progressively shorter or progressively longer. So you just go through all of your ramps and cut them all to the right length first. And then we'll move on to the next step. So for the next step, what you want to do is take all of your nice tall stems and just start putting them in your fermentation jar. Uh, and I like to just I'll tip the jar on its side and kind of you know wiggle them around so that they're getting in there pretty tightly. We've got our jars pretty well packed with ferments. Uh, you can see, you know, the bulbs are going to fill up the bottom faster than the skinny stems are going to fill up the top. So some of these ended up kind of short up the side. I still think that's a really attractive presentation. Um, if you don't want to, you know, kind of cram the shorter ones in there, don't. That's fine. Um, you can move on to the next step. I've decided to add some red pepper flakes to this ferment. You can add spices if you want. You don't have to add spices if you don't want to. Um, I'm just going to add a little sprinkle, um, and I don't always measure, so in this case, just a sprinkle. I like things really spicy. Um, also, ramps have a really strong flavor, so I assume I won't be using very much of them in whatever application I'm using them for, and so um, they're, if they're really spicy, that's okay, because I'm only going to be uh, using a little bit. It'll be really rampy, it'll be really spicy, it'll be really, really good. So, we've added some spices, it's time to add the brine. I've done this recipe before, so I know that it's going to take about six ounces of water to top this jar up. Um, to that six ounces of water, I'm going to add um, one teaspoon of salt, uh, because I happen to know that's the appropriate amount to bring this ferment up to a two percent, a little, little over a two percent salt solution. Uh, it's okay to use tap water, so that's what I'm going to do. It's okay to use tap water, and then um, I like to just put it in a jar like this, screw a lid on, and just give it a good shake. You definitely want to make sure that your salt is completely dissolved uh, before you pour that over the liquid. Um, so if you have salt settling to the bottom, then you know your whole solution isn't going to be that two percent salt. So just make sure to mix it up really well. All right, looks good. So now we just. Pour the salt over our ferment, and there we go, perfect. Now, because I added the spices, I've got a lot of little little pieces that are floating. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, just like that technique I talked about kind of in the intro, um, whenever you have little pieces in your ferment, it's helpful to take a bit of the thing that you're fermenting, but whole, um, 
a whole version and tuck it in there. Um, and I see I've got a couple of the spices that keep wanting to come up over. And it's not a huge deal if you miss a couple of them, but just the goal of this is to just kind of provide a, a good barrier. Um, and then you push until even the leaves that are covering are underneath the salt solution. Um, so as you can see, most of my uh, most of my red pepper flakes have been trapped underneath the leaves. I'm really, really, really excited to see how this turns out. These uh, red pepper flakes are from peppers that my mother grew two or three years ago and dried. And I had them as whole dry peppers. So the next thing that you want to do, once you have your, uh, once you have your leaves there, you've got that little barrier. Now I'm going to take my plastic bag and create my weight. And you, when you're doing this, I've got my baggie filled with water. Um, when you're doing this, you just want to make sure to twist it up really, really well, and that way you don't you don't risk the not salt water coming into your ferment. The other thing you can do here is just to fill the baggie with a salt solution with your brine, and that way, even if it does leak out, it's not the end of the world because um, it's not going to dilute your water at all. So. Now I'm adding, I'm putting the, the second layer, and again, this layer is to protect your lid from the acidity that's gonna develop under there. Um, but you can see as I press the lid down, you can see the water kind of coming out um, and covering, and that's great. You wanna make sure that you just have, again, that brine is covering everything that's in the jar to protect it from contamination. Screw the lid on. Um, another great thing about this method here is um, that if you, so as opposed to using um, the metal actual lid portion that goes underneath this, the um, great thing about using plastic instead of that is that you can kind of see uh, when it starts to expand with, uh, with the activity that's going on inside and you can know to burp that occasionally versus a metal lid, you have, you're creating an airtight seal, which is great for not having contaminants go in. But if you don't check it regularly, that can build pressure up inside of your jar and actually explode your jar. It'd be really, I mean, flying shrapnel of glass in your house. So you wanna make sure that you avoid that. So if you do use the metal ring with the metal lid, um, even if you have that plastic barrier, you wanna make sure to burp your jar every single day. So, all right, but that's uh, that's it. That is uh, all together. You can see that the water is all the way up to the top. Everything inside is floating and there's a nice barrier between the ramps and the outside air. So I would recommend setting this because it is completely full with water. I would recommend setting this on a plate to ferment and we'll move on to our next one. So we have our bulbs finished and now we're going to move on to fermenting the whole ramp leaves. So this is a fun one um, because once you get, uh, once your ramp leaves are fermented, you've got these whole leaves that you can wrap around different things. My favorite way to use it is wrapping it around, uh, wrapping your fermented ramp leaves around um, cubes of cheese or uh, cured meats and then slicing them up and so you've got this kind of real thin uh, layer of ramp around um, uh, some piece of cheese, usually like a mild, uh, creamy kind of cheese, and it provides us a really incredible contrast in that flavor. So it goes, looks really great on, you know, on a charcuterie board. So that's one of my favorite ways to use the, the whole leaves. Um, if you run out of ways to use the whole leaves, you can always just chop them up. So that's, you know, kind of a, a secondary benefit of doing it this way, just that you have more options. You can keep them whole, or, you know, if you find that you're just not using them that much, uh, you can chop them up. So. Um, this is also another really great way to use up, this is another reason why it's really great to use up the leaves that are kind of um, a little floppy because you're folding them up and so you have less of an opportunity to crack or break them. They will fold really nicely. Okay, so with this recipe, you actually wanna start by adding your water, your brine first. Uh, since the leaves are gonna be packed really tightly in the jar, they're gonna be kind of, kind of like how we covered the bulbs, it's gonna be that way all the way through your jar. And so the water's not gonna really be able to pass from one layer to the next very easily. Uh, for that reason, we're also gonna add our spice first rather than last. Um, and for this one, I've chosen to do a peppercorn medley um, to season this one. So again, I'm using probably about a teaspoon. Uh, you don't have to measure it. Just 
cover, maybe cover the bottom of the jar. It's really, uh, really, really personal preference here. Um, and then we will mix up our brine. So for this recipe, I've pre-weighed everything and I know that I'm gonna need about a half a teaspoon of salt to reach that 2% solution. So again, I've got my half teaspoon salt. It's okay to do a little more, um, but not less. Put that in there and then it's, and then I'm gonna um, end up needing about three ounces, two or three ounces of water. And since I would much rather err on the lower side and just put two ounces, and just, you know, have, I, I need to make sure that all of the salt that I put in here gets into this jar. Uh, and so if I end up not using all the water that I mix up, that's a problem. Then I have to try to guess how much salt didn't go in and add it or, you know, do like that micro math, which can be really tough and challenging. So rather than mess around with that, I'm going to, I know that I'll probably use about three ounces, but I'm only going to put two ounces of water in the jar to dissolve the salt in. Um, I'll add that and then I can, I'm free to top up with an additional ounce of water, knowing that I already have that kind of in my calculation for um, how much salt, you know, and water I need. And it's the same way with any of these recipes. Um, it's the same way. There's always going to be some variation uh, with how much ends up in your, um, ends up in your jar versus how much water you're going to use. So uh, it's, you know, it could be a good idea to always use a little bit less water than you think you'll need. That way you make sure that all the salt gets in the jar. And then if you want to top up with um, a little more water later, no problem. So that's what I'm going to do. All right, looks good. So there's no water kind of sitting and hovering on the bottom of the jar when I let it still. So Go ahead and dump that in first. So now I've got my brine solution. That's going to be all the salt that I need for my recipe. Um, and I know that I can add up to one more ounce of salt based on the recipe. Um, so if that, you know, if I need to, I can top up with, and I will measure that. So if I need to, I will top up with up to an additional ounce of salt. And then I'm just taking my leaves uh, and folding them, placing them in the jar. And again, this is a great opportunity to use kind of floppy, sad looking leaves. If you have too much stem, you may just choose to cut that off. Set it aside. It's delicious. Don't throw it away. Um, fold your leaf like maybe in three. Just slide it down. And you can see as you push it down, the water level is coming up. Some of the peppercorns are coming up. Some of them are staying down. So you're going to be able to, you're going to disperse the uh, peppercorns really well throughout the jar. Now I'm starting to notice as I fill this jar up that as I press the leaves down, they're not really 100% covered by water anymore. So now is my opportunity. I know that I'm gonna, you know, I know that I'm going to need that extra ounce of water. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and add it now. Right. So I've got my extra ounce of water, and I'll just add. Looks like I'll add all of it. There's room. Um, Now beyond this point, if you need to add any more water, you'll want to make sure that that water is a brine solution because everything that you've got in here is now the complete recipe. So if for some reason you do need to add more water after this point, what you'll want to do is mix up your water at the rate of one teaspoon per 10 ounces of water. And I'm just wrapping two, three, four leaves at a time together. Uh, and that re the reason that I do that is just that it's easier to use the ramps that way. The leaves when you're done. So um, generally I don't use more than two or three at a time. So um, you could wrap more at a time, um, but then you have to kind of undo everything that you're doing. Um, you have to kind of take them, you know, take out, unwrap, use just a couple of them, wrap them back up and put them back. Or you could wrap one at a time, but you know, that's going to be a little more tedious of a process. So it looks like we've got our ramp leaves are pretty full up to that kind of that line there that we've been using. So I'll go ahead and do the other steps now of filling the bag with a little, little bit of water, twisting it really well, and then we'll put our lid on. Got our baggie, again, not very much water at all. Um, twisting it really, really well to help make sure that it doesn't spill. 
putting that in there. All right. And then our lid or lid um, substitute. Screw that ring on there. And in place of the ring, because the ring kind of cuts the plastic, so like if I ever open this up and check it, I need to put a new plastic bag on because that plastic bag has kind of been cut by the ring. Um, if you want to do something instead, you could use rubber bands. Um, or string or something so you can you know improvise even that 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 ring if you wanted to so that's all set up we've got our beautiful peppercorns in the bottom there we've got our layers of ramp leaves and we can set that aside and um, move on to our next ferment so for our final ferment we're going to do shredded or very finely chopped ramp leaves you could even take it to the next level get your food processor out and just really just ch ch finely chop or puree those ramp leaves um, and what you're going to end up with is more of a condiment kind of texture, kind of um, consistency to your ferment. Um, and for this one, I have decided to add yellow mustard seed because I feel like I'm going to use it a lot on sandwiches um, and in dips and things like that. And I really like mustard. Um, I also really like the way that mustard goes kind of with garlic and kind of the flavors of ramp. So uh, that's what I decided to use in this ferment. So um, similar to how I did the leaves, I'm going to um, put the seasonings and I'm going to put the water in first. And now because the ramp leaves are chopped so finely, there actually a lot of the moisture for this ferment that's going to cover your leaves is going to come from the ramp leaves themselves. So for this ferment we need a, only about an ounce of water and then a quarter teaspoon of salt. So I'm going to mix that up right now. All right, looks good. No sediment in the bottom. And then I'm gonna use about a half a teaspoon. I'm using yellow mustard seed here. Um, their yellow mustard seed is traditionally more mild and since the ramps themselves are gonna bring a lot of spice and a lot of kind of zest to it, um, I don't necessarily feel like I need to add extra with the mustard. So I'm just gonna use about um, a half a teaspoon of yellow mustard seeds in this one. So after you added your salt and spices and water, we've got that in the bottom, we're going to start chopping up our ramp leaves. Um, so it's about two cups of ramps will fit in the bottom of this, uh, in this will fit in this container. Um, because as you chop them and add them to the container, you're going to, um, you're gonna be really pressing them down and they're going to lose, as I said before, they're gonna lose a lot of their own moisture during that kind of salt process. Um, where the salt kind of sucks the moisture out of the vegetables, just like onions, when you sweat onions, uh, it's kind of the same concept that's happening here. So you'll be able to fit quite a lot of ramps in this little container. So now we have our salt and our spices added to our jar, and we're just going to chop the ramps and chop them as finely as you can manage without um, you know, taking all day to do it. So once you have your ramps chopped, um, I like to use, this is one of those situations where I have a, a tool that I really like to use, this funnel. It makes, uh, helps keep the jar clean while you put your uh, ramps inside. So we're just going to do a little handful and stuff it down. So as we go kind of packing, you can see my fingers in there and I'm just packing down the ramps really well. And another bit. It's definitely to the top of the jar now. We don't want to put any more inside. So I'm going to go rinse my fingers off. So now that we've got enough ramps packed in there, I'm just going to take some whole ramp leaves um, and lay them over the top, kind of like we talked about in the intro. You can just lay them uh, in the jar as a way of sealing off the rest of the ramps from the shredded ramps from like poking out. And so you just want to make sure that you're keeping the ramps along the sides, the whole ramp leaves, keep them along the sides. 
and they'll provide a, a seal. There we go. It smells amazing, by the way. Okay, now just make my little weight. Nestle that in on top. Put my other plastic bag. And you can see when you do this, you pull that down tight and you can see all the kind of liquid coming up over the top, which is great. There's no little chunks of ramps in it. It's just the liquid. Right. And there we have it. Uh, beautiful. We've got a little bit of ramps on there, so that I'm going to uh, I'm gonna go just rinse this off. Um, you don't want to invite any uh, anything that likes to infect ramps you don't want to invite that onto your jar of fermenting ramps so we'll rinse that off and then that'll be good to go ready to go we can set that aside um and then we'll look at it again we'll look at it tomorrow all right so there we have it um our lactobacteria are n tucked in really nicely um they've got a comfortable place to culture uh so we are just going to take these jars and set them in a cool place out of direct sunlight uh, they'll sit there for about a week, but we'll want to check on them every day. Day two, let's take a look at our ramps and see what's going on. You can see some bubbles going on. That means that there's some active fermentation. We've got some juice in our plate already. So there's our folded leaves, a big old, big old air bubble right there. We've got our chopped leaves with some mustard seeds in them. And we have our ramps with red pepper flakes. They're a lot more loosely packed, so the air bubbles aren't really as visible. Looks like it's lost a little bit of liquid, uh, which is common, especially in the first couple of days. There's a lot of... Um, in the first couple of days, there's a lot of activity that happens. And so if you filled your jar kind of like we did, you know, right up to the edge there, there's a lot in there. It's very likely that some of that liquid has come out, um, which is fine. I mean, it's kind of like uh, if you get a cut and it's bleeding, um, that's pushing like all of any sort of infection out. So you'd much rather have uh, liquid coming out, like so much liquid that it's coming out of your jar than not enough liquid. Because that liquid that's coming out is going to make sure that it's pushing out the lactobacteria and that really healthy water, it's not letting anything kind of crawl inside. So it's fine that it pushed liquid out. That's why we have our plate. And uh, we're just gonna mix up a brine solution and top up this jar. Uh, same thing with this one. Looks like it lost quite a bit of water. So we're gonna go ahead and make that brine solution. Now you're gonna use 10 ounces of water to about a teaspoon of salt. All right, so it's been about a week. Let's check in with our jars. Uh, if everything looks good, then uh, we can go ahead and put them in the fridge. So let's open them up. Um, remember, you wanna make sure that your hands are clean and that if you use a utensil of some sort to dig inside, that that's clean as well. Um, this is now a live community of cultures inside this jar. So first, First, what I'm smelling right now is a very pick, it's very distinctly pickly smell. And if you um, are not new to fermentation, that smell is gonna be very, very, very familiar to you. If you are new to fermentation, um, it's sour, it's got a very distinct smell. It's sour, it's not like vinegar, um, a little bit of like what the actual thing, the ramp or you know the carrot or whatever it is will shine through, but there's definitely a distinct that lacto fermentation smell that that lets you know that your product is healthy um, you're gonna make sure that there's no mold on top no calm yeast on top if it smells good it's good to eat if it smells repulsive um, because the the possible things that could get in there if you didn't for some reason do it right or if there was you know some sort of something happened and something was able to get into the jar and infect it it wouldn't give it an off smell 
or there'd be mold on top. Um, so those are the things to look out for. If it smells good, it smells sour, you've done it a good job and it's go ahead, it's, it's safe to eat. So we're gonna try this. Mm. Mm. So yeah, you heard, maybe you heard, that ramp up was still nice and crispy, crunchy. Mm. Got a good amount of heat from the pepper flakes that we put in there. Mm. Oh, so good. So perfect. This is great. It's sour. Um, we can go ahead and pack it back up. Now, there's no need necessarily to keep the weight in there at this point. So just set that aside. Um, and again, I'm going to just put a different plastic bag in there. Uh, and Ooh. Like I said, if I use these more, just because like kind of the pain of every time you open it up, you want a new plastic bag on there. Um, if I use these more, I would definitely go out and buy lids if I use this size jar to ferment more. Um, but since I don't, I'm not going to. But definitely just, you know, again, for the storage. But you can take this and you can put it directly in the fridge at this point. Um, but again, that metal, you want to steer away from metal lids on your ferments because those, that, those metal lids will corrode from the acidity. So, all right, ferment number two, this is our whole ramp leaves. And let's pull out. Oh. So they're soft. Again, I've got that sour smell. Looks great, smells great. So our ramp leaves here are, let's see if I can get one open. So our ramp leaves are still holding up really well. They've gotten dark green in color. Um, the texture is obviously is a little softer, but they still have a good, like, they're firm. Like they're not, you know, ripping apart. They're not falling apart. They're not mush. Um, if they're mush, that'd be another kind of sign. Maybe you let things go too far, whatever the case. So let's just give this a try. Mmm. Mmm. I'm not getting a lot from the peppercorn, but a little bit. I think if I did this again, I might use a little more peppercorn. Mmm. Mmm. Another winner. And then finally, take that out. Now remember we used some leaves kind of to cover and then this one had mustard seed in it. Clean fork. Just gonna grab a little bit of that and see how this one turned out. I'm gonna give it a little stir. Um, so if you remember we didn't do that too much while we were packing it. We kind of just ended up putting all of our bite of that. Mmm. Wow. I really like what the mustard did in that. Oh, see, I had to resist going back in for another because my mouth has been on this, so we don't want to double dip in the jar. Mmm. Oh my god, it's so good. Um, that's going to taste amazing on a sandwich. Um, in a dip. That's going to be really, really good. but it's still, <laughs> as my son just peeked around the corner at me because he heard me telling a story about him. 